This is the SHW Off-Road Daily Drop. I'm Jake Tillman, your host. I do this every single weekday. So like, subscribe, comment, get engaged, stay tuned, and uh, make sure you just ride along with us and, and learn as we go along here. But today we're going to talk about group rides, some of the things to keep in mind. Uh, but first, why I love group rides and maybe some things that I don't love about them. But what I love about group, group rides is it, it creates a safe environment for you to push your limits. Uh, because you have such a great support system literally behind you on the trails. You have leaders that help you guide through obstacles. You've got people to lean on if you need recovery. And you've got a lot of eyes keep an eye on your vehicle and how it is performing off-road. And so it's it's a great way to push yourself and to learn uh, is on these group rides. But there are some cons, right? Group rides can be really slow moving, especially if you have a lot of people that really maybe haven't done a lot of off-roading before. They just don't know how to function in a group. I see tons of guys that have off-roaded for a really long time and then you put them you know, in a group and they cause all kinds of problems as far as holding up their group. And I'm gonna explain why here in a little bit, but um, group rides can be slow. They require some patience usually, unless it's a tight-knit group that is, that is wheeled before. Like uh, I did a, a, a quick, you know, just an evening trip a few weeks ago with the team, you know, we, we flew through trails that, you know, usually take three times as long in bigger groups. So if you get a tight knit group, yeah, you can move through trails quick, but anytime you do a serious group trip, you should expect the going to be slower. Okay. So those are some of the pros and cons, but some things to keep in mind with group trips and, and things you should probably prepare for one communication know what form of communication the group is going to use and have that form of communication. If you don't have it, make sure you reach out to the leader and or other people that you're going to be riding with. Make sure somebody can spot you, okay? Because I see this a lot where people go on these group rides and they'll go without a radio. We use a lot of GMRS out, out here uh, on some of our group rides, but you get CB as well as HAM are the top three. Uh, but I see a lot of people go on these, these trips and we we, we only... You know, the leader only has so many to hand out as far as extras are concerned. And inevitably, a couple people end up without them. And then those are the ones that can't hear some of the critical guidance that's coming from the front of the line. You know, lines to pick to keep from holding up the group and getting stuck or having to backtrack. Um, so bring a radio, use it, or just make sure somebody has one lined up. A GMRS radio, which is quickly becoming one of the most popular, you know, forms of communication for some of these group rides. You can buy a handheld for under a hundred bucks. And, and technically you need a license to, to use some of the channels. And even the license is way cheaper than it used to be. So make sure you know what form of communication the group is using and you have that form of communication or you just have it accounted for, you know, through somebody else in the group. So be able to communicate. It's critical. It'll help you have a better time. and It'll help the group in general move through stuff quicker. Number two, follow and lead. Follow and lead really, really well. What does that mean? Well, this is what I was referencing before when I see a lot of people that maybe have off-roaded in a long time or, or have been, you know, are not new to this, um, but they don't operate well in a group because they're the ones that fly through obstacles, forget about the person in their rearview mirror and all of a sudden, the person in the rearview mirror has rearview mirror has to guess that a line to take because they, they weren't able to watch the vehicle in front of them. This happened in the last group ride I went went on, and it happens all the time. And since they don't know where to go, they find themselves stuck. You know, all of a sudden, the whole group has to take an hour to try to recover this person and then spot them up, spot them up the right track. And they've got to remove the whole line of vehicles behind them. They often have to uh, resituate them and get them out of the way and stuff. So. This literally happened in the last ride. I had a, a pretty much a stock forerunner, TRD Pro, and we had we had two lines to take through this path on the DBBB, Daniel Boone Backcountry Byway. Check it out if you don't know what I'm talking about. But you had one path which was kind of a mud hole, and you had kind of a, a bank, and you could go up the bank around this mud hole. And the problem with the mud hole is it had some really deep ruts, it had some tree stumps, uh, it, it just rained, so it was quite sticky. Uh, but the 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 bank isn't an obvious line to take because it's it gets a little off cam camber it gets a little little tippy so you have to know where to go and ultimately you know the mud pit seems safer for this driver so the driver tried to go in the mud pit quickly bottomed out did a ton of scraping it took a while to pull him out backwards without damaging again this stock forerunner i think maybe with running boards um and it, it cost the, the group an hour now 
those moments are great learning opportunities, right? To, to safely learn how to recover. And for that driver, right? The driver probably learned a ton, but ultimately I think the driver probably would have had a less stressful of a time and the group could have moved quicker if only the driver in front of them had made sure that the driver behind them was still in the rear view mirror so that they could watch the line and, and go where they were supposed to go. So make sure that when you're following and you know following the rest of the group, that you're also thinking about the person behind you because ultimately they rely on you to know where to go and to see kind of how the tra terrain behaves. So follow and lead well. Lastly, be educated, be prepared. Okay, no conditions, have proper equipment, make sure your vehicle is equipped, make sure you know the expectations of the leader, right? So, and, and if you don't know, ask, right? If you, if you sign up for a group or you, you're, you're eyeing a group ride and you just don't, under, you just don't know the expectations, right? There, there are group rides that are gonna expect, you know, 37 inch tires, lock front and rear, that kind of stuff. And there are gonna be group rides that, you know, are totally okay with a stock vehicle, you know, it, it's catered towards that kind of build. So totally different trail rides and, and maybe you belong in one or the other. Uh, make sure you know that. Make sure you do your homework, be prepared, make sure your vehicle is equipped for it. Uh, I see a lot of people kind of get over their head often for some of these group rides. In the moment you don't feel comfortable on a group ride, it's okay to say so, right? If, if, if you're going down uh, a trail with a leader and the leader is all of a sudden getting you into some really hairy stuff that you've never done before or you're just not comfortable with, make sure you, you communicate that. And, and most of the time, if, if you're new to this, it's gonna feel a, a pretty scary, right? Some of the stuff we do might, might feel a little scary to you. And the leader's probably gonna talk you through it. You know, you need to trust your leader ultimately, but trust your gut at the end of the day. Uh, it's your vehicle, it's, it's your experience. and communicate what you're feeling and, and what you're going through. And, um, most cases, if you're new to this, if you're new to, to off-roading and overlanding, your vehicle is way more capable than you are. So put trust in your vehicle. Uh, but like I said, trust your gut as well. But ultimately have fun and learn, learn, educate yourself. That's the best thing about these group rides. Um, it's easy also to kind of get the we, we kind of sometimes get this weird mentality when we do things in groups where all of a sudden we find ourselves doing irresponsible or things we just never would do if we were on our own so make sure you check yourself too. being in a group environment it can go both ways i've seen this you, you get people that are kind of timid about what they do and are super conscious about what uh, what others think and stuff and and that helps them keep in check as far as what they do off-road but i see another group of people that knowing that everyone is watching them uh it triggers just irresponsible behavior so check that and uh make sure you just stay in your lane and think of everyone else in the group as you do some of these group rides. But there you go, That those are some of my big tips on group rides. If you've got something to add, drop it in the comments. Tomorrow we're gonna talk all about solid axle lifts. I think we're gonna stick in the scope of Jeeps. We're gonna talk about uh, Jeep uh, geometry and what it takes really to align a lifted Jeep. So join me tomorrow. Thanks again for watching today. We'll see you next time.